Hey guys, thank you. Welcome back to another Bible study on Joel. Um, we should finish up Joel today. We, we're going to pick up where we left off in Joel 28, and we're, gonna, we're just going to do the rest of Joel 2. So it's Joel 2, 28 to the end. It's about five verses. shouldn't take that long, but we do have some, some deeper stuff here to follow. First of all, if you see me doing this, which I just did, I've got some flies in the house right now. And they're, they're bugging me. I mean, that's what flies do. They bug you, they're bugged. So if you see me doing this, I apologize. I hope it's not too much of a distraction. I think I got that one. No, there he is. Anyhow, second thing. Um, if you get a chance, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. That way you find out when I do the next uh, teaching on Joel. And Joel 3, I've got all the notes. It's just a matter of doing them. Sometimes it takes forever to do them. Right now it is, I'm misspeaking or I'm having internet problems. I, I just think maybe I'm not saying what God wants me to say. So I'm, I'm giving another shot here. And lastly, you know, we look through this. And I mean, most of the people, if you're following me, it's because a lot of it's because I'm doing prophecy videos and everybody's seeing how close we are. Um, does that mean we has to come this year? No, it doesn't. Good chance, but it doesn't mean it has to. Might have to wait seven more years and see. I'm not just making that up. There's videos explain why I would say that. I'm not, I know it's a, crazy statement, but it's, I believe it's biblical. Um, I love scripture. And as I'm going through this verse by verse, I do the same thing in my prophecy videos. And I'm, I'm just reve revealing what's said in the verses. I'm not making anything up or I'm not a prophet myself. But if we see this and we see how ugly it's going to be during tribulation, you've got to be out sharing Jesus. If you're not, you need to change something. And let me give you a tool to work with. I've done this in some other videos, but here's what here's what I'm suggesting for you. Just something like, Father God, thank you for what you've done through. Um, thank you for what you've done through uh, your Son Jesus Christ almost two thousand years ago. That Father God, that I know where my salvation is. I know where my eternity lies, Lord, and I know whose hands it's in. And Father God, I ask that you give me an opportunity to share that with somebody today. And Father God, um, I need you to help me open up my eyes to those opportunities because Father God, I can be so blind and I can miss it right in front of me. And Father God, um, I also need you to share through me that I need your words, Father God. My words are weak and loose, useless, but Father God, your words have meaning and power and your words have life. So Father God, please let me share your son with somebody today. Thank you. Amen. He'll honor that prayer. He'll honor it because that's a prayer in his will. And what I'm also going to ask, suggest is that if you do this, you really need to be in the word reading. And that's how he's going to give you his words. He might recall something from memory, but what I find I'm reading something and then it comes up and I get to share it with somebody and it's like right there for somebody and they're just amazed because I'm speaking into their lives in ways I have no idea how I'm doing it. It's pretty cool when you see it happen. That's just the Holy Spirit that works through us. And that's what we're going to be talking about, the Holy Spirit today that gets poured out on us as we read this. So let's go ahead and start reading. I'm going to read all of the passages. There's only like uh, what, one, two, three, four, five, five verses here that we're covering. And then we're going to go and, and, and try to dissect this and see what it's really saying to us. Uh, Joel 2, starting in 28, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And also, my men, also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon shall be turned into blood before the coming and the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance as the Lord has said among the remnant of the, excuse me, among the remnant who the Lord calls. All right. So as we look at this, first of all, it says it shall come to pass afterwards. After what? Well, what we've been talking about, We've been talking about after tribulation. So it's going to come to pass afterwards that the Holy Spirit gets poured out. That doesn't make sense because we know the Holy Spirit came down with Peter in Acts 2. And that was way before tribulation. So now go down. You see in 29, it says, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So days represents thousands of years, at least 2,000 years. Um 
so it happens like during tribulation, but before that as well. So it started with Peter, but it's not just with Peter. Okay, the Holy Spirit can get poured out at any time when somebody becomes into Christ, when somebody gets filled with the Holy Spirit. But then there will be another pouring out of the Holy Spirit uh, during the millennial kingdom with the Jews. And we're going to see that. And that's what that's why that's why you have sort of two different timelines, it says here. And now who, who gets the Holy Spirit? It says, I will pour out my pour out my spirit on all flesh. That's Jew, Christian, anybody who belongs to Jesus, anybody who has the whole who has Jesus has access to the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, your, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall have dreams and your young men will see visions. I kind of think this stuff needs to be in this stuff. I, the way I said, okay, I've got issues with that. I've seen so many false prophets, too many dreams that didn't come true. Too many, you know, people are saying things that don't happen. Just the other day when I was looking at my videos, we're talking about one of the videos, 2007 to 2008. He's like, you're wrong. 2014. Or 2024. I'm sorry. I'm saying uh, 2022 or 2029. 20, and he's like 2024. I'm like, how do you get that? Where do you get that from? It's my prophecy. Plain and simple. It's his prophecy. Thus, I should believe it. I don't. I've seen too many false prophets. Yes, you have people prophesying. It says it here. Yes, you have people with dreams and people with visions. I'm just one. Maybe I'm a little conservative. I think that they should be consistent with the word of God. Not just leave it at that. Um, and on my mentors, maid service, and I'll pour out those days. Let's go and see where it started. The first time that we that I know of that this started where the Holy Spirit got uh, poured out, and that's going to be found in Acts 2. Um, because, see, before this in the Old Testament, the Spirit would come upon somebody, not in them. The only people that it was in would have been the uh, Nazarites, such as John the Baptist, such as, um, oh, what's his name? Samson. Okay. Um, and there may be others. Those are just the two that come up to the top of my head. So in Acts 2, we see the Holy Spirit coming down. I'm not going to read all of it. You can go back and read it all if you'd like. Uh, reading all of something, anything in the Bible is good. Reading the Bible is good. So we're going to start in 2.1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. Let me explain Pentecost real quick. It's Shavuot. All right. And I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I've had somebody tell me that. I pronounce it that way forever. I'm going to pronounce it wrong. You know what I mean. I know what I mean. We're good. All right. So in the spring feast days, you start with Passover. We all know that one. That's on the 14th of Nisan. The next day starts the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And then on the, the day that follows the next Sabbath, always a Sunday, you have the Feast of First Fruits. And from that point, you count 50 days. I think that's the counting of the Omar, but you count 50 days to you get to Shavuot, which is also a Pentecost, a Penta meaning 50. All right, so let's let's move on here in reading. They were with all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a, a, a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, wind, Holy Spirit. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. And the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. Um, and then let's keep reading for a little bit. And there were dw dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under, na uh, under heaven. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together. And they were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Gal Galileans? And how is it that we can hear each one in our own language in which we were born? And then it, it says a little bit more, but let's go down to 14. But So with all this and all the confusion, Peter gets up and stands up and says, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, 
Let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not, for these, the people are not drunk, as you suppose, it, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. Okay, that's where it's different. The rest of this is pretty much the same. And I just read it and I'm not going to read it again. You can go ahead and do it. It's pretty much the same. But here he's saying the last days. This would be the, in Hebrew, and Matthew is written in Hebrew, this would be the end of days. But days, plural, more than a thousand years. Okay, so that's how, and this, so the, the, giving the spirit, pouring out the spirit, the Holy Spirit dwelling within us started with Peter then, and it continues today. But it's going to get poured out after tribulation as well. So let's go to Ezekiel 36, I believe, and take uh, 35, no, 36, and take a look at that. And we're going to start in 22. Ezekiel 36, 22. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for the my holy namesake, which you have profaned among the nations where you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I, ha when I am hallowed in you before their eyes. For I will, take you, I will take you from among the nations, and I will gather you out of all of the countries, and I will bring you into your own land. That's starting now. It started uh, 1948, actually, maybe even before that, in 1918 with the Balfour Declaration, and the Jews started coming to Israel. It's not going to be complete until the millennial kingdom where, where Yeshua is going to gather everybody from all over the nation, all over the country, all over the world to be there. Everybody who is in him, Jew and Gentile alike. I talk about this in many of my videos. Uh, Paul says that you will be with Christ forevermore. Christ says when he, when the, when the glory of God goes into the temple, he says, I will dwell there forevermore. If Christ is dwelling in Jerusalem, guess where we are. Okay. Um, anyhow, I will give you a new heart for I'll take you from all the nations and gather you out of the countries and bring you into your own land. Verse 25, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. This actually is, they would do a burning of the, of the red heifer and take the ashes and put them in these barrels. And when you come up to Jerusalem for the feast days, they would sprinkle that water on you. Um, when Jesus turned the water into wine, they had these big barrels, whatever. Those were the barrels that they would use for, the, for what's called the pilgrimage feast days when everybody would come to Jerusalem. Um, and then... And, and in Israel at that point during the millennial kingdom, there is no idols. Everybody's going to know the Lord. We'll see that in a minute when we go into the new covenant. Yeah, we're going to go to the new covenant in a minute because that's all connected into this. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Hmm. New spirit and new the spirit. Yeah. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and I will out of out of your flesh and I will put give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and keep, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Notice the connection here with the spirit that gets put in us, that we're going to keep his commandments. That's all through the New Testament too. That's the other thing that I was lied to as a kid. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, anyhow, Going back up here, and, and when I read this, it just hit me today when I read this. And it's like, oh, I've seen that before. You got to love that. When you start knowing scripture enough and you see things, you're like, oh, I know where that is. I will, uh, verse 23, and I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. Then I am hallowed in you before their eyes. This is in Ezekiel 38. So turn over to Ezekiel 38, just a couple pages. 
And I know the talk, everybody's talking now, you know, Russia, Turkey, Iran, Ezekiel 38, Gog, Magog, it's going to happen at any time. You got all these prophecy people out there talking about it. The only problem is none of those nations border Israel. The only nation, the, there's a war described in Psalm 83 where all the nations border Israel. That has to happen first. Israel wins Psalm 83 of their own accord. God has to step in on with Gog and Magog. And I believe that that's just before the midpoint of tribulation somewhere where God steps in because Israel sees this horde coming, this group of people coming that's beyond anything they've ever had to deal with in their lifetime with the numbers of people coming to at them. And they're going to cry out and rend their hearts, not their garments. They're going to cry out and they're going to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And God's going to step in and he will be a wall around Jerusalem. He's going to wipe out these hordes for them with fire and brimstone. But in this, and that's a short description of Gog and Magog. I'm not going to get into it at length here, but let's look down here at the end. I know we just did this in the last teaching, but this is important. Thus, I will magnify myself and sanctify myself. This is verse 23. I'm sorry, I should have said that. Um, Ezekiel 38, verse 23. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. See, nations are going to come to know Yeshua. And that's how in Matthew 25 you get the judging of nations. Um, but this is not something that's going to happen like before tribulation, that all the nations are going to know God. No. That's not going to happen until the midpoint somewhere. Um, and that's, but it's kind of cool seeing this where the Holy Spirit's going to be poured out to Israel as well. Um, let me just look at my notes real quick. Okay, back to Joel. Joel 2. Let's go down. I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Um, that could be like nuclear bombs and weapons and stuff going off during tribulation. And we see wonders the last time that um, that Israel got attacked. There were all these missiles shot and they just didn't go to Israel. Some just blew up. Some went places they shouldn't. Like nobody really got killed when they, they sent a thousand missiles into Israel. That is a wonder. Oh, my goodness. But. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Again, the, the sun turned to darkness. It could be, you know, solar eclipses. It could be that so much war is happening during tribulation that um, um, all the dust and debris is up in the atmosphere. Um, and it's interesting. And the blood and the moon shall be turned to blood. You know, immediately you got to think blood moon tetrads. I've never really talked about it much. Um, it's a total lunar eclipse on the first and last Jewish feast day, two years in a row. And one just happened in 2016, 2017. And that was seven years ago, one week of year, years ago. And I got a list right here. I'm just going to read it off just in case you're curious when they've happened. And I don't know dates on all of them, what happened, like 162, 163. I don't know what happened then. Um, 795, 796. 842, 843, 860, 861, 1493, 1494, uh, 1492, Christopher Columbus, a Jew, brought a bunch of Jews to America. 4950, that was right after Israel took Jerusalem. Excuse me, Israel became a nation in 1948. 1967, 1968. They took more land, including Jerusalem. And then 2014, 2015, and they're saying the next one is a thousand years away. I, I don't know if that's true. That's just what they are saying. And they say all kinds of things. And you just don't even know who they are. Does they read the Bible? I don't know. All right, I'm getting silly here. So um, is there any place else in the Bible where it says you're going to be that there will be signs in the sun and the moon that mean anything? There is. There's several places. I'm just going to go to one, and that's in Psalm 19. And I remember my church would always sing a song about this psalm. And it's interesting because it totally missed the meaning of this. 
And people do all the time. They miss the meaning of this. And maybe, you know, the meaning they get out of it is great. And that's the meaning that they have. And there's deeper levels in there. I've heard it said that scripture is like a chocolate cake, like a layer cake, because as you keep going, there's just more and more layers. Um, Psalm 19, starting in verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God. And there are scripture about that, you know, through creation, you can look at and see God in it. Anyhow, um, in the firmament, firmament is like the ground up to the um, heavens somewhere. Uh, the firmament shows his handiwork. Day under day utters speech, and night under night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. Then he has set up a tabernacle of the sun. So he's telling us that the sun and the moon and the stars are going to be talking to us, telling us things. What's the next verse? Which is like the bridegroom coming out of his chamber. Hmm. We looked at this last week with the bridegroom in the chamber. We've looked at it several times that we're hidden away. In the bride, and that the church will be hidden away in the hoopah, in the bridal chamber during the seven years of tribulation. We looked at this last week, and it was the bridegroom. I think it was last week, maybe the last week, last study, or maybe the study before that, um, about how the bridegroom and the bride will be coming. And that's Christ and the church coming at Armageddon. But this only mentions the bridegroom. When is it that just the bridegroom comes out? That is the rapture when he's coming back for his church. He's not going to come back on the earth. He'll be in the clouds. It's not really a coming of the Lord because his feet are not on the ground. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything here. And no, moving on. 32. Oh, the, be, and before the great and terrible and awesome day of the Lord. That's the last thousand years, the day of the Lord. It's great. It's awesome. But it's terrible, especially if you're stuck here and you're not saved, it, that's going to be really terrible. Um, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty understandable. You call on the name of the Lord, you get saved. What's interesting, though, is if you look up that definition of the word in Hebrew, you get escape, to slip away. Hmm, does that remind you of something? Go to Luke 21, verse 36. Luke 21, verse 36. Watch, therefore... And this is the Olivet Discord in Luke. And again, the rapture is not in here, but this could be an allusion to it. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all of these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Because if you're raptured beforehand, you do escape all of these things. And this everything in here is talking about tribulation for the most part. And you get to escape them or to slip away from it, and you're hidden away, but you will stand before the Son of Man in the Bema Seat Judgment, which is in 1 Corinthians 3. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. What do we got left here? I'm looking at the wrong notes. That's why I'm getting confused here. I'm sorry. Um, and there's one last thing that I want to touch on. For in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls out. What remnant would be getting deliverance at the end of tribulation? That would be those Jews or those people that are hidden away in Petra. And again, something has to happen. I believe it is Psalm 83. Something has to happen that the Jews are going to know it's time to go to Petra, where they're going to be protected for times, times, and half a times, three and a half years. And that's who it is. They're going to walk into the, the tribulation period alive. And that's the remnant, because God always brings a remnant out. Um, keep in mind that the judgment, I know I said this over and over, but judgment is only 
to uh, judgment is to bring repentance. Repentance is to bring restoration. And restoration is to bring glorification. Something that hit me earlier today, in between times of trying to take this, I've had the internet go out in the middle of this several times. It has not, I've misspoken sometimes. I, this is like the sixth or seventh time recording it, but not, but in between some of those recordings, it hit me. Now, all those nations are going to know who God is at, at um, Gog and Magog. They're going to know who he is. Um, and, you know, that's where you get the judging of the nations. But, you know, when you get to the end of tribulation, you get into the bold judgments and everything, there's really not many people left on earth that are going to, you know, know the Lord and be saved. But over and over, they're saying like, then they shook their fist at the Lord and they would not repent. They know who he is. They just want nothing to do with them. All right. I thank you for watching these videos. Um, don't miss a chance to share your shoe with somebody. God bless you. And I, I look forward to you coming back and joining us for Joel 3. Maranatha.